Hi, this is Scott Vaughn. Let's take a look at this example of conditional probability and medical diagnosis. This is an example that I've done before in an older video, but it's obviously so relevant now that I just thought it'd be interesting to go back and take a look at it again. And um, of course, I'm thinking about COVID-19, and uh, I did not try to use any numbers that are related to that specific uh, disease. I don't know really what those numbers are, and that isn't really my goal here, is to analyze that specifically. I just want to look at probability uh, and conditional probability and the topic in general mathematically. Uh, and, you know, because this type, this idea of testing uh, and having positive, uh, false positives and false negatives is relevant. So uh, the question says, or the first line here, it says, a certain disease is present in 5% of the population. A test for the diagnosis of this disease is not perfectly accurate and has a false positive rate of 1% and a false negative rate of 2%. I'll get back to that in a minute, but let me read the questions. Number one, if a randomly selected person in the population tests positive, what is the probability they have the disease? And number two, if a randomly selected person in the population tests negative, what is the probability they do not have the disease? So these questions are like um, more complicated than they seem at first. It's You really have to actually take some careful attention to these ideas of probability to really be able to understand these. Uh, average person walking off the street would really struggle with this because uh, it isn't obvious and um, maybe even I want to make a point here that I think is meaningful to me when I talk about uh, probability this is the mathematics of how we measure uncertainty right so we're dealing with obvious uncertainty here in these percentages and these probabilities and how we can make certain logical conclusions about things for which we are uncertain, that's what we call probability. That's the science or the mathematics of probability. So, okay, and then, like, um, so it says a certain disease is present in 5% of the population. So it doesn't say how many people. This could be a large population, a small population. Mathematically, it doesn't matter for the analysis that we're doing here. Uh, 5%, 5 out of every 100 uh, have this particular disease, whatever it is, right? And then the test that would diagnose whether or not somebody actually has it isn't even 100% perfectly accurate. There would still be uncertainty as to whether they really truly have it, even based on the test results, right? So, so when you say false positive, what that means is that you tested positive, but it's actually wrong. You don't even really have it. That's terrible, but that can happen, right? And then there's false negatives, which are negative results and say you don't have it, but in fact you actually do. Again, awful. I'm not sure which is worse. Maybe the false negative, uh, but in some ways the false positive is really bad because then you could go through all sorts of other, um, you know, unnecessary treatments. Or you know, I mean, it's both are terrible, um, but they happen. They're absolutely a part of uh, real medical diagnosis. And uh, so with these uncertainties. We, we can think logically and mathematically about these two questions. If you are completely randomly selected person, you know, selected completely randomly from the population, uh, and, and what I'm talking about here specifically is that we, you, you don't necessarily have a person that has symptoms of whatever this disease is. Of course, that would change your measurement of the uncertainty. If they have symptoms of the particular disease, that would change how you measure the uncertainty as to whether they have it. We don't have that given in this question number one. It just says person is, you know, just given the test randomly. Person just, you know, you, suppose you test uh, any random person in the population and you, you know, and, and it, if it tests positive, what is the probability that they actually have the disease? So without a real careful analysis, it's really difficult to do. There's a there's a whole subject in probability called called Bayes' theorem, which can handle much more sophisticated questions than this one. I don't need to come up with the formula here for Bayes' theorem, because I can answer this specific one and questions similar to this 
with a table. And so with the table, I think that's a nice way to do it. That's what I'm going to do with this video. I'll solve this with a table so that I think it, it's a nice way that you don't get the formula in the way and you can really see uh, why this answer unfolds the way it does. So to answer both of these questions, I'll make the table. I'm going to move them out of the way. I'll come back to the questions. I'll put the table in here. We use this table to answer both of those questions. So the first thing I'll do is highlight this idea that there is 5% of the population with the disease, and I'll write that very succinctly in a kind of math notation as the probability of the disease, 5%. That is 0.05 in decimal, and I'll write this now as a fraction, 5 out of 100. So that's, in other words, out of every 100 people, there would be 5 people that have the disease on average. Now, you could have 100 people and nobody has the disease, and in the next 100, you might pick up 10 people, and so you could see it sort of averaging out to 5 every 100. So that's the way you interpret that probability, is 5 out of every 100 on average. So now we're going to build a table that has a row for disease. There's disease, no disease, and then we have the possibility that somebody tests positive or they test negative. And so really there's actually four possibilities here. You can test positive and have the disease. You can test negative and have the disease. This section right here represents testing positive but not having the disease. This is testing negative and not having the disease. For this table I'm also going to need totals. Okay, so the way that I'll use this table is I'll say with this probability of the disease being 5 out of every 100, if I took a sample of 100 people, I would have on average 5 people with the disease, on average. So this table represents sort of like statistically on average the number of um, cases of these different cat, you know, uh, categories. So if there are 5 people with the disease, there would be 95 on average that don't. So you fill that out first, right? Disease is 5 no disease total 95. Now we have false positive rates 1%. So the way to interpret that is that you look at here positive, but this is no disease. So this right here represents the number on average, the number on average out of 100 that would be false positives. 1% of those people that don't have the disease are still going to test positive. So what I do is I get 1% of the people that don't have the disease, 0 0.01 times 95, and that gives me 0.95. I'll put a circle around that because that's the value that I calculated. Now because we've already figured out this total 95, we've already established that, this is the number that are going to test positive out of those 95. So we could simply subtract 95 take away 0 0.95, and that's 94.05. The other possibility here would just take the other 99% that don't have the disease would test negative. You could get 99% of this 95, and that would give you that same number. So we've got false positives here. I can go now to this box right here and say, wait, these are people that actually have the disease. There would be five of them on average out of 100. The five people with the disease, um, if they tested negative, that's the false negative. So let's label this box false negatives. And how, what's the false negative rate? It's 2%. And so what, what the way to interpret that is to say that being a false negative, you're getting negative and it's wrong. You actually have the disease. We have five people here out of 100 that have the disease. 2% of them are going to get a negative result because we have this false negative rate of 2%. So 2% of the 5, so 2% of that number, 2% of that number, that is 0.1. Now you could right away sort of think, well, wait, how does that make any sense? How could you have 0.1 people? Well, we could think of this as a statistical average. That is 0.1 people out of every 100. Or you could say one person out of every 1,000. You could say, for example, you wouldn't very often have somebody that's a false negative in 100 people. Most of the time there would be nobody there, but um, it would happen 0.1 times out of 100 or maybe one time out of every 1,000. And all these decimal values, they could just be scaled up to whole numbers by just increasing the sample size. These are just statistical averages uh, per 100. I mean like per 100 people. Okay, so then once you've got that point one, actually you could 
pretty easily calculate this one by just saying we already know the total. So 5 take away 0.1, that's 4.9. So that's the value I calculate for this box. So most of the people that actually have the disease are going to test positive. This is like the other 98% um, from this 2%, right? We've got 2% that are going to get negative results. 98% of them are going to get positive results. That's most of those five people, 4.9 people on average. 4.9 out of every 100 are going to get um, in this category of actually being positive. It's most of them, 4.9 out of, you know, because five people have it, 4.9 on average are going to test positive for it. Um, so now, in order to get to the answers to this, these questions here, we'll get these totals. How many people actually test positive? Some people that don't have a test positive, not everybody that actually has a disease tests positive. So we just get this total, 4.9. Well, I don't think I have to write what I'm doing there. It's a total. I'll just say add these guys, and you get 5.85. And if you add these guys, you get 95.15. And I'm looking right there at how that confirms. No, well, <laughs> that doesn't confirm that that, I just did it wrong. 94.05 plus 0.1 is 94.05. Uh, gosh, there. What I really need to do is make sure these two add up to 100, and they do. 94.05 plus 0.1 is 94.15. Now, we can finally answer the question. We're looking for the probability if somebody says, if a randomly selected person in the population tested positive, what is the probability they have the disease? So it doesn't say, again, that they actually have symptoms or anything. They're just one person tested from the entire population. And so if we also had additional information, that would change how we measure the uncertainty. If we had additional information that they had symptoms, he's like, okay, well, that's additional that change, you know, of all the people that have symptoms, more of them might actually have the disease. That would be directly in the calculation that changes the probability, right? Um, so it would still be an uncertainty, but it would be a different measurement. The measurement of the uncertainty would be just simply different. So let me answer this specific question. It says, if a randomly selected person in the population tests positive, what is the probability they have the disease? So written in the notation of conditional probability, we're saying, what's the chance they have the disease given that they tested positive, like that? If you test positive, what's the chance you have the disease? It's surprisingly not, you know, you know, obvious. Right? It's actually takes some trained understanding of probability. So, so if I'm saying how many people actually tested positive total, it was 5.85. So you put that as the denominator, 5.85. How many of those actually do have the disease? 4.9. So dividing those, it's 0.84, and therefore 80 percent. That's really kind of hard to wrap your head around. You know, like an 84% chance. That is a measure of the uncertainty given specifically the information that we had. Testing positive in, uh, under these circumstances for a randomly selected person, testing positive, 84% uh, chance of actually having it based on what was given only. Right. So I think I will jump in here and interrupt myself to make this really important point. I don't want to get I don't, I don't want this to be missed also. This is a really important difference between the probability you have the disease if you test positive, which I just calculated 84%, and compare that with what's the probability you test positive if you have the disease? Those are different. This is a 98%. If you have the disease, the chance you test positive comes right from this false negative rate of 2%. How could that be? Let's look back at the table. Right here in the table, right, if I knew that somebody, that there were five people that have the disease, if you have the disease, what's the chance you test positive is 4.9 divided by 5. That's 98%, 4.9 divided by 5. It's the other 98% besides those 2% that fall, test negative when they have it. 98% will test positive. So if you do have the disease, you're one of those five that have the disease, there is a 98% chance that you'll test positive. It's right there. It's the 4.9. All right, let's go back to where I was. I mean, maybe part of what I'm trying to say here is that that's something that you really could not have done in your head, right? You really have need the training of probability, mathematics, to really be able to make sense of that. You still, you know, interpreting, what does that really mean? Like, are you 84% 
you have the disease at a, you know, only saying, you know, it is a measure of the uncertainty, 84%, 84 times out of 100 under those circumstances, is another way to say it. Now let's answer this question number two. If a randomly selected person in the population tests negative, what is the probability they do not have the disease? Writing that in the notation of conditional probability, we're saying, what's the chance of no disease given tested negative? So by that, what I mean is, it's almost like a fraction here, where I'm saying the total number of people that tested negative, because it says, you know, if they test negative, that's a given. If they test negative, what's the probability they don't have the disease? So of all the people that tested negative, how many don't have the disease? And we've got the numbers right there in the table. How many people tested negative? You will have an average 94.15 out of every 100 that would test negative. And how many of them don't have the disease? 94.05. And so divide that, and you get 0.9989, roughly rounding off. So that's, a, let's just say, 99.9%. .9%. So fairly confident, I mean, extremely confident, that if you test a negative, you don't have the disease. But there is still some uncertainty, and that's how we would measure that uncertainty uh, mathematically. That is a logical and correct and absolutely certain conclusion about things for which we are actually uncertain in terms of the you know, incidence of the disease and the uncertainty in the tests and all of those things. So, all right, I think that's, that's it. I just wanted to go through those. I thought those were interesting to think about, if, uh, if you're, if, particularly if you're studying probability right now or if you're thinking about the uh, probabilities involved in testing people for really any disease, right? I mean, I've been thinking about testing for coronavirus this whole time that I'm doing this example, but there's this commercial running on TV right now that I see almost every day for Cologuard, a completely different kind of disease, but the mathematics that I'm doing here is exactly the same for both types of, um, for both diseases. So part of what is being communicated here in the commercials is information about who the test is really for. And that helps to manage issues of false positives and false negatives in the sense that if a test is used appropriately, that reduces some uncertainty in interpreting those results. And there's information right there in the commercial that comes up on the screen that indicates the false positive and false negative rates. And I can see certainly how the uncertainty that comes from these false positives means patient and doctor need to include other factors in the diagnosis besides just the result of this particular test. All right, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much. I uh, hope it's been helpful and, and useful.